Here's a statistic that might surprise you. According to the National Ocean Service of the USA, only 5% of the world's oceans have been fully explored. That means there are almost certainly hundreds of fish and marine life species we've never encountered living down there in a vast realm of utterly unknown territory. Perhaps we should be making more effort to explore the seas, because unknown and unexpected objects have a habit of turning up in them, as you're about to see in this video. We mentioned the possibility of undiscovered sea creatures lurking below the waves, and we're going to start off with one. In late 2018, a pair of divers off the coast of New Zealand came across a terrifying 30-foot-long creature that has the appearance of a giant worm. Fortunately, they had their cameras with them to capture this strange encounter in its entirety. Steve Hathaway and Andrew Buttle, a pair of friends who routinely go diving together, describe the creature as being hollow, almost as if it were a huge windsock. As the video footage they recorded plays, the sea worm can be seen changing shape and pulsating, perhaps responding to the proximity of its human visitors. Without examining the creature firsthand, it's hard for scientists to say what it is or what it might be, but they believe it could be a pyrosome a creature that's not one single entity but a composite of millions of tiny organisms that feed on plankton. When the organisms come together, they create a mass of bioluminescent material that can look like this. If the scientists are right, this isn't a worm at all. It's a colony ship. The landscape of our planet hasn't always looked the same. There are parts of the land that were once underwater, and there are also areas deep underwater that were once part of the land. That explains why there's a 60,000-year-old forest at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico off the coast of Alabama, which was discovered by scientists in April 2020. The forest, which is made up of cypress trees, was buried under sediment over many years, then covered by rising sea levels. They probably remained buried until Hurricane Katrina tore through the area in the 21st century and disturbed the sediment they were hiding beneath. After discovering the forest, a team of divers managed to retrieve pieces of the ancient trees and found that they still had bark attached to their exterior, and the interior of the wood still had its original colors. Usually, trees would rot away after such a long period underwater, but the thick layers of sediment prevented oxygen from reaching the fallen trees and preserved them. Even more excitingly, there are ancient organisms trapped inside the trees, which scientists are still studying today. During 2016, an exploratory dig was commissioned at a site in Buckinghamshire, England, ahead of the planned construction of new houses in the area. During the excavation, an ancient Roman well was discovered, and at the bottom of the watery pit, a basket of three chicken eggs that had lain undisturbed for around 1,700 years. Unfortunately, one of the eggs was broken as archaeologists attempted to bring it back to the surface and caused a stench so putrid that the attempt had to be abandoned for several hours. It's likely that neither the eggs nor the basket would have survived if they'd been left on dry land, but the waterlogged pit of the well has protected them from the worst effects of aging. Also found under the water were shoes, tools, and Roman coins. That's led some experts to believe this might have been a wishing well of some kind into which Romans threw objects in the hope of receiving good fortune. Eggs were associated with birth and fertility, so whoever left the basket here may have been hoping to start a family. Chuck Lagoon also known as Truck Atoll, is a natural coral harbor in the Central Pacific area with an interesting history. During the Second World War, it functioned as a major Japanese naval base and became the focus of an American attack during Operation Hailstone. It's also a focal point of archaeological dives and has been visited by the great French explorer Jacques Cousteau. His 1971 visit to the site resulted in the discovery of a whole fleet of wrecked ships in various states of disrepair, which have gone on to become known as the Ghost Fleet of Truck Lagoon. The especially clear waters of the lagoon allow for a crystal clear view of the shattered boats, many of which still carry the cargo of fighter planes, bulldozers, tanks, mines, or other weaponry 
along with personal effects and remains of their lost crews. As fascinating an area as it's become to visit scuba divers, the wrecks will eventually have to be cleared up, the ships are decaying, and when the holes breach, they'll spill oil into the surrounding area, that would be an environmental catastrophe and one which ought to be avoided. The Apollo 11 mission is famous for being the venture into space that put human beings on the moon. In the process of reaching for the stars, though, NASA deposited quite a lot of trash into the ocean, including some F-1 rocket engines. In 2013, the forgotten engines were finally hauled back out of the sea in a mission paid for by Jeff Bezos, the founder and owner of Amazon. Five engines like these would be used in the first stage of the Saturn V rocket that launched the Apollo 11 astronauts into space, with each engine standing almost 20 feet tall and weighing more than 18,000 pounds. Although Bezos didn't specify exactly where his team had found the engines, it's known that they were somewhere on the floor of the Atlantic Ocean. It took three weeks for the team to find the engines, which were finally located at a depth of nearly three miles below the water's surface. Although the team brought as much equipment back to dry land as possible, they were forced to leave quite a lot of it behind, including the Saturn V stage structure, which stands out in some of the eerie undersea photos taken by Jeff's robot divers. We won't pretend to know everything about what fish might get up to when we're not watching, but we do know for sure there's an underwater strip club complete with a dancing pole underwater off the coast of Eilat in Israel. This isn't part of a sunken kingdom, though. The strip club, formerly known as Nympha's Show Bar, was deliberately built as an underwater attraction, but the business failed and the premises were abandoned. Since all the human revelers have stopped visiting, tropical fish have made the place their own. Diver and photographer Gil Koplovitz rediscovered the Forgotten Club in 2013 and took most of the pictures you see here. Back when the club was open, it was accessed through a door at street level, which took paying visitors across a 230-foot-long bridge and then down a staircase below the water. It appears that the empty club is well-preserved, the chrome interior is still shiny, the chairs and tables are still in place, there's even a bottle of water on one of the tables that's been left as if someone eventually intended to come back to it. All of us are familiar with the sight of enormous factory chimneys in towns and cities that belch smoke into the sky. But how many of you knew that the same thing also happened as a natural occurrence underwater? The phenomenon is known as a black smoker, and the biggest one ever seen was documented off the coast of Costa Rica in 2007, eight and a half thousand feet below sea level. Positioned on a volcanic ridge, this all-natural mineral chimney emits hot, dark water that looks exactly like thick, dark smoke. In the process, it attracts tropical marine life of a kind that's rarely, if ever, seen anywhere else beneath the waves. That marine life includes pink statimedusae jellyfish and spiky tube worms that have encased the vent at the chimney and help to explain why this black smoker has officially been named the Medusa Hydrothermal Vent Field. At the mouth of the vent, the temperature of the water is a boiling 635 degrees Fahrenheit. Under normal circumstances, it'd boil, but the water pressure this far beneath the sea is so great that it prevents that process from happening. Take a dive off the coast of the island of Bonaire in the Caribbean Netherlands and you can get an up-close and personal look at the wreck of the Helma Hooker. The old shipping vessel was built in the Netherlands in 1951 and went about perfectly legitimate shipping duties for many years. But by 1984, she was aging and it passed into the hands of drug dealers. She was boarded by police while in the port of Bonaire and found to contain a false bulkhead within which was a haul of cannabis weighing over 25,000 pounds. The crew was arrested and the Helma Hooker was impounded. With nobody to care for her, she began to take on water while at anchor and eventually turned on her side and sank September 12, 1984. Who continued a visitor to this day at a depth of around 100 feet below sea level. Such is her popularity that even after almost 40 years in the water, 
she's still considered to be one of the most attractive wreck diving attractions in all of the Caribbean. The correct name for the incredible human-made art exhibit under the waters of Key Biscayne in Florida, USA, is the Neptune Memorial Reef. In execution, it's more like an underwater city of the dead, but that doesn't mean it's a morbid place. It's actually incredibly beautiful. The exhibits that have been positioned on the seabed have been deliberately treated to make them look ancient. But in reality, they were created and arranged by artist Kim Brandle in 2007. There's more to Neptune Memorial Reef than these stone lions and the sculptures, though. This is a functioning graveyard into which cremated human remains are cast into the concrete shapes and then become a part of the necropolis where they can be visited by their friends and relatives, so long as those friends and relatives don't mind doing a little scuba diving. Aside from housing the dead, Brandel hopes that coral and marine life will also be attracted to the 16-acre site, which she intends to expand upon in the future. Eventually, she'd like it to become the largest human-made underwater reef in the world. Since we're on the topic of giant human-made structures underwater, Let's talk about Ocean Atlas, which is hiding just below the surface off the coast of Nassau in the Bahamas. This statue of a girl sitting underwater is the biggest underwater sculpture in the world as of August 2020. We have sculptor, diver, and photographer Jason DeCaris Taylor to thank for the creation of this work of art, which was completed in 2014 and is designed to promote healthier marine environments for coral and fish. Jason's entire statue is made of sustainable materials with a neutral pH level specifically designed to encourage coral to grow. For inspiration, the sculptor turned to the myth of Atlas, an ancient Greek story about a giant who is condemned to carry the weight of the heavens on his back for all time. In place of Atlas, Jason depicts a young girl propping up the oceans. He's concerned about the threat posed by habitat loss and overfishing when it comes to marine life, and he'd like his artwork to act as a reminder to people to think more about sustainability when it comes to the oceans. We've already mentioned the famous French explorer Jacques Cousteau in this video, so let's take a look at what the underwater village he built in the 1960s looks like today. Only one of the structures he made in the water close to Sudan still exists today, and that's the habitat known as Pre-Continent II. Cousteau passionately believed that it was possible for humans to live underwater at depth for long periods of time, and he built three habitats below the sea to prove it. The first was built close to Marseille in his native France, but this one once featured radios, a television, three functioning telephones, video surveillance, and even a library. The residents of Pre-Continent II even had a pet parrot who was trained to warn the occupants if the oxygen levels inside the habitat became dangerously low. Cousteau eventually gave up on the project because he became uncomfortable with the fact that he was being funded by the petrol industry, but this hangar of Pre-Continent II is still standing and is still full of air. In theory, it's still possible to gain access to the interior and be perfectly safe inside, although we don't know of anyone who's tried. There are two schools of thought about the mysterious underwater structures close to the Greek island of Zekenthos. The first school of thought is that these are the remains of a sunken city and a forgotten civilization, perhaps even the site of the fabled lost city of Atlantis. The second school of thought says that these incredible structures were created naturally by bacteria as they fed off gas as it leaked out from beneath the seabed. Scientists prefer to believe the second interpretation and have presented evidence to support it. But many people struggle to believe that everything that exists here could have been created by bacteria 5 million years ago. Some of the structures bear a close resemblance to stone-paved courtyards or fallen colonnades. As incredible as bacteria can be, they aren't noted for their sense of architectural style. So why would they make such specific and pronounced shapes? What could have made the donut-shaped structure that sits right at the heart of it, if not a pair of human hands? 
Perhaps there's something to be said for the natural formation theory. Though if this is a lost city, where are all the fragments of pottery and other signs of life we typically expect to see at such a site? We suppose this debate is going to carry on for a while. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.